Phantom currently is on a sale, right? The Phantom price is very, very low. And when we compare this just in terms of charts, right, in, in TA perspective, if you keep the technical analysis very, very simple. When we look at the Phantom price in US dollars, I don't think it's very hard to, to see this sideways trading range. It's hard to argue against this, actually. I think everybody who looks at this chart sees this sideways trading range. And so this again means when everybody sees this, that this can potentially become a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? When everybody sees these kind of levels over here as a potential support, then maybe we are not the only ones that see this potential risk of maybe 15% versus a potential reward of maybe 130%, right? If we are not the only ones who see that, then maybe this can move the market, right? If you think the price here goes up and if everybody else thinks the price here will go up, now everybody else thinks it makes sense to buy when others are fearful, then this will become the truth, right? Because you are buying here because you think it might go up. Other people will buy. More and more people buying pushes the price up. It's self-fulfilling. Everybody tells themselves the same story. It will happen. That's the dynamics of the market. And so the question then is, the, the problem though, okay. So the problem though with this kind of an approach is that this is still somewhat subjective, right? Because drawing these kind of lines, uh, they are helpful for these kind of obvious cases, especially, um, but they can't really be tested. And so that's how I personally, how I personally prefer to actually trade. When I set up something, when I set up a trading strategy, I like to look at it uh, in the past. So I like to uh, define a, a fixed rule set. I, I like to define a fixed trading rule set. And then I want to look at the past. How did this trading rule set perform in the past? A mathematical rule set. And then based on that, I want to buy and sell. I want to simulate buying and selling of how would this perform in the past. And then I want to get, come up with a result. And when the result is satisfactory, then I might consider using these kind of rules in the future. And that's where uh, the following chart here comes in. This is where the performance chart comes in. This is a simulation of buying and selling the FTM token since its lifetime with a thousand US dollars with each trade and during the lifetime of Phantom, we would have made 10,000. Now this simulation does not include any kind of trading fees. It does not include any kind of slippage or any gas fees or anything like this. This is just raw uh, buy versus sell prices, right? Bid equals to ask, nothing like this here uh, um, mentioned. But there's also no return from, for example, yield farming or so, right? One might potentially during these uh, cash periods where we are just in cash over here, uh, just hold, um, uh, just do liquidity farm, to, uh, uh, just liquidity farm uh, return, right? Or lend the cryptocurrency out or something like this. So there is ways to actually even generate more return than what we have seen over here, what we see on this chart. Now, let me first go into the strategy. Okay, before we go too much into the backtest, let me first explain what's actually the strategy here that I've backtested and that I personally now also use for trading. The idea is that we look at these short-term exaggerations. So we want to look at particular points in Phantom's history where there were also where there was also a lot of fear, where there was a lot of sell-off people quickly sold off the price, dumped very quickly, and we want to measure this mathematically, and then we want to buy into that fear. And then we want to check, did that perform? And the answer is yes. Now, how do we measure fear? Uh, the best way, how I personally think, uh, one way that is at least very good, who knows if it's the best way, but one way that I think is very good is to look at the RSI at the relative strength index. And you want to look at this in a short time window because these crashes, they happen relatively quickly, right? You don't want to use the daily prices for this. In this case here, we use the hourly RSI. So I've selected here now the hourly time frame, And over here, we've got the price. 
let's get rid of the trading volume. And here we've got the RSI. And let's simplify this a little bit because I'm actually not using all of this data. So let's do the following. This is what I'm actually using. So here we've got the relative strength index. The calculation of the RSI is a bit complex, so I'm not going to go into details of that. But basically it measures how quickly is the price going up or down. When it's going down very, very quickly, then the RSI is very, very low. When it's going down very, very quickly as well, uh, when it's going up very quickly, then, then the RSI is very, uh, very high. And it ranges between 100 and zero. That's the range of the hourly RSI. Now the idea, the idea is to buy whenever this hourly RSI is very low. So I have done a similar back test for this for Ethereum. And so I want to show two different approaches to use this hourly RSI. The first approach is to simply use this for dollar cost averaging. Now what's dollar cost averaging? It's buying regularly into a coin with a set amount of money. So the easiest way is, for example, when you've got Bitcoin uh, to buy for, say, 100 US dollars every month or every week some Bitcoin and buy into this regularly, independent of the price. The idea is that when Bitcoin's price is comparatively low, you get more Bitcoin for a US dollar. And the price is relatively high, you get relatively less Bitcoin for a US dollar. But you buy regularly into the asset so that then when in the end a parabolic rise does occur and you don't really care when it happens but when it does occur that then you can take some chips off the table and you can make profit okay so that's the idea of dollar cost averaging not to try to time the market too much and to kind of get away from all of this market psychology to not overanalyze things okay so it's a straightforward way dollar cost average into the market now the standard approach simply thinks of, okay, we buy into this, say, on the first of every month, and we don't look at the price. But there's actually an improved version of this, which I've backtested, which is buying whenever the hourly RSI is below 20. So your average price is better than random when you decide to buy whenever the hourly RSI is 20, so below 20. So look at this here, for example. Uh, on the 22nd of January, this is now for Phantom, the hourly RSI was below 20. The price here was at $1.91. Before that, we had prices over $2. After that, we had prices over $2. And so this is definitely better in this time frame than just buying on a random price, right? A random price over here would probably be somewhere around, say, $2.50 or so. But by using the hourly RSI, we basically picked the bottom over here. But that being said, this doesn't mean it can't go further down, right? When we look, when we further scroll out over here, we do see that it can fall further. But it's simply better than just random. When we then look at the, the price where we again saw the hourly hours I low, this was again at a very depressed price. So we would have bought over here. Still a better price than whatever happened before and whatever happened afterwards. The reason why this strategy is good for dollar cost averaging is because you want to simply accumulate over the long term. You believe in, in the asset over the long term. And so you want to get a price that's better than just random, but you're okay even if the long term trend or let's say the medium term trend for several weeks or months is down, that's okay. Unless you simply get a better price and just random flipping on the first of every month, uh, you can use the strategy the hourly RSI. Now, how well does this work better? Now, this is now why we've got the backtest, right? I've done this backtest with Ethereum. So if you're interested in buying Ethereum based on the hourly RSI, this is the kind of result you might expect. So if you buy when the hourly RSI is at 50, so somewhere in the middle, right, you just get the average price, right? You pay a little bit more than the average price when you buy, whenever the hourly RSI is at 20 or below, then on average, you pay a 40% lower price. So this is the discount from the average price. So the idea this was set up is simply, I looked at all the prices of Ethereum's history over this time period. So this was the 1st of January, 2022 to July of last year. That's when I did that backtest. 
you look at all the prices, you take the average of all those prices, that would be the average price you would get by dollar cost averaging in, somewhat, right? And then you compare that average price to the average price to the subset of a data where the RSI was 20 or below. So you look at all the prices, you average them out, and you compare them with only the prices whenever the hourly RSI was at these below at these low levels. And when you do this, you find out when the hourly RSI is 20 or below, you get really, really nice discounts. Now, you don't want to go too low. You don't want to go on 10 or so, even though the discount is even crazier. But these kind of signals, they get triggered way less often. So the hourly RSI 20 gets triggered roughly once a month. That's why it might make sense to use for dollar cost, aver dollar cost averaging. The one for 15 only gets triggered every three to four months. And so with 10, maybe once a year or whatever it is. So that's why you want to use something like this. The more you, the further you go out with this hourly RSI, the less often this happens. On the other hand, here we've also got a discount, but that's um, something for another video. You can simply check out that video, actually. When you look for Ethereum strategy on this channel, you can find an explanation of this. Um, quick summary, though. I think here we get better than average prices for the high hourly RSI because that's when normally a trend starts to establish. Okay, so when a positive trend starts to establish and we get a sudden shake out to the top, a sudden jump, then a new trend often starts. And so that's why we get better than average prices, even when buying when the hourly RSI is very, very high. The area you want to avoid is whenever the prices are just somewhere here in the middle. This was just a short clip. For the entire episode, click over here. It has got way more details. See you in that video.